So if you've had a rough week, if you've been suffering, that means that the Lord has brought you here to take you up the mountain. Amen. Yeah. That, he's, he, that you've, you've, you've gone through a tough time this week or maybe it's been a rough month or whatnot. But he has brought you here to heal you and start taking you up to see his glory here tonight. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for these scriptures, Lord, that you've given me, God. You have prepared uh, our hearts and, and all of us here this evening, God. And we just want you to continue Hallelujah. to guide us as you, as you have been from the, from the opening song to, to the word from Kim to now what you're going to do here through these scriptures, God. And, the, and this, this awesome time that you have predestined, Lord, and you know the things that you're going to pour out for us, God. And we are here uh, with open arms and open hearts and open minds for you to do your will in our life. In Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Yes, Lord. All right. So I was praying um, about, you know, what to share. And, you know, so we're in the in the theme of uh, uh, or the series of, of believing God for the impossible things. That's right. But the, but the key part of that is, is we have to pray and, and communicate with him so he can lead us to the victory in the impossible things. Yes. Prayer is the key. Amen. The conversations with the Lord is the key to get you through the exact ways, the right turns, how to handle the right situation, who to speak to, who to stay away from, what are the steps that we need to take so we can ultimately get to that impossible thing that God has laid on our heart that he wants to accomplish in our life. It's through prayer. Yes. Prayer. Oh my you, goodness. Lord. So as I pray, as, so he told me, you're going to teach on prayer. <laughs> uh -huh. Good. You know that Jesus teaches us how to pray in the Bible. Yes, he does. Yes. So that's what we're going to look at. Uh -huh. Who better to teach than him? <laughs> there is no. So problem. we're going to look at how he, uh, how he uh, goes in and explains it. So we're in Matthew chapter six. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and then pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. Amen. Like Lala has said so many times, and, and, and you'll hear it from a lot of people, is that it's the secret place. Yes, yes. Coming to church is awesome, and this is where we come together and we rally together, and the God moves in the spirit, and we are in unity, and we're in unity, and God moves us out, and he, he, this is like a, a team huddle. We get all hyped to go out and, and share Jesus with people, and yeah. we get healed, and, and we go tell people about it. But really, where the breakthrough happens, really where the the, the miracles, like we were talking about, are going to see, really how He gets you through the suffering times as well, is in that one-on-one -on -one time. That's right. Right. That one on one time, that, that one spot, wherever, wherever it is that you go. Amen, Pastor. That's and, right. and, and, you, and you talk to him. Yes. And you, and you tell him what's going on. And, 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 you, and he, he, you let him speak to you and you, you constantly do that. You need to do that every day. I can't, I can't encourage you enough on that. Every day you need to spend time talking to him. Yes. Yes. For, for all the things that we come up here and preach and what all the songs are about and, and all, all the hope that you get from reading the Bible and, and coming to church, it's, it's all going to manifest when you're with him one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, That's man. where it's going to happen. That's where it's going to take place, where you allow him to, to, as you come and you make a point, you put your phone down, you turn the TV off, you go and you shut the door where no one can bother you. Nothing's going to interfere from you hearing from the Lord. The Lord sees it when you do that is what this scripture is saying. Yes. And when you make that effort, especially in society today, it is so busy. There are so many things to do. A hundred things that want to keep your mind busy. And you turn it all off and say, no, Lord, I'm going to spend time with you. That is where real growth happens. Amen. That's right. That is where it happens. Good word. The most, the most powerful times in my life. Yes, I've had amazing times and services. Where I'm knocked out in the spirit or whatever it is. It's when I'm in this church. I come over by myself. And I turn on some music. And I just lay on the floor. And I just say, God, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's it. I'm here, Lord. That's it. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do tonight? Yeah. And, and, and then he just guides me. And he'll, he will do the same for you. He will. It doesn't have to be in a church. He does. That's right. I just live next door. So I come here a lot. Yeah. <laughs> It could be in your bathroom. It could be in your living room. It could be in your kitchen. Wherever your secret place is, God will meet you in there. Amen. And he will reward you for, for spending time with him. He will bless you. Then as you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating the words again and again. Don't be like them, for your father knows exactly what you need 
before you ask him. That's right. So it's not about standing up and saying a prayer and saying the right words or, 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 or just giving a list of things, okay? No. Now, I, I know I've said this a lot, and I want, I want to, God put this on my heart to share with some people so they don't get the wrong idea. We, having a prayer list is a great thing to have, mm -hmm. okay? But if you just read it off as a list and then get up and go, that's the problem that we have. That's right. I've, got a lot, I've got a big prayer list. Yeah, me it's too. in my office. And I, and I go through and I check them off. And I, but you know what I do? I bring it to his feet. And then I stop and I listen for instructions. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Don't use the words over and over and over again. Don't you just keep talking. Because he already knows what you need. Yes. Say it one time and then listen. Yeah. Yes. That's the key. That is the key to the prayer. That is how you're going to grow, and that's how you're going to get the answers to your prayers. Some, some of us have been praying the same prayers maybe for years and years and years, and you're not understanding why it's not getting answered. And he wants to have me tell you you're not listening to the direction I want to give you because you're on about your day before I get a chance. Uh -huh. Yeah, give him time. Just give time. him more time. There's that. You can never spend too much time with the Lord. Amen. I have never heard anybody say that. That's right. How is it going? It's going pretty good, but you know, I've just been praying way too much lately. <laughs> no. That's right. No one has said that. No one is ever going to say that. No, that's right, brother. It's all about communication. Just any healthy relationship is, is about communication and having it be a two-way conversation. Yes. yes. So now he's going to tell us, right? Pray like this. And what, what I find very interesting as, uh, you know, I'm growing and studying the word and stuff like that. Prayer is the one thing the disciples asked Jesus how to do. Yes. Didn't ask him how to heal people. No. Didn't ask him how to cast demons out of people. He, he, they asked to pray. They didn't ask how to preach. No, that's right. That says a lot. Yes, it does. For someone that, for people that wandered, walked with Jesus for, for three and a half years, the things that, that, the one thing they wanted to know how to do. It's prayer. Why is that? Because they could tell that the prayer was the key and how important it was to Jesus. Yes, that's it. And if it's that important to Jesus, it needs to be that important to us. Amen. Even it more needs so. to be the number one priority for us is, is it being in prayer. So what does he say? Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Hallelujah. Yes. I, I think there's a lot of us in the church that we are underestimating the holiness of God. And the, and, the, and the willful sin that we walk in and we think it's not a big deal. No. I, you are a represent, I am a representation of Jesus Christ wherever we go. That's right. And it's not about being perfect like Kim said. But it's about the things that you know you're not supposed to be doing and you're not even trying to change them. Mm. That is what is hindering us, Help us in Lord. certain areas in our lives. Uh -huh. Not perfection, but genuinely trying. Yes. And saying, God, I know you're almighty and I know you can help me with this. And I'm going to make an effort, Lord, because I know you are holy. And I, and I, wa I want to be like you, God. I want to walk with you. I want to do the things that you've called me to do. And you've got to follow the things that the Lord is calling all of us to follow through. Yes. You aren't the one exception that gets to do what you want. No, that's right. Some of the tough things in your life that you're going through right now are because you will not stop doing deliberate sin that you know you're not supposed to be doing. And you think as long as no one knows and I can hide it, that it will be okay. It's not okay. No, and God is life. putting roadblocks in your life on purpose to try to get you to maybe hear this message or some other message to say, I'm not asking you to be perfect. But can we at least start trying to stop doing that? Yes, yes. Bring it to the you got to try. I, you know how many times it took me to stop drinking? Yeah. Probably a hundred. I don't know. Yeah, you got to bring it to the light. But I got to keep, I had to keep trying. And then eventually, now look, I haven't had a drink in almost three years. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. And I failed over and over and over again. But you know what? Every time I got back up, the Lord took my hand and said, come here, son. I love you. You're forgiven. Let's keep going. Yes. Let's Amen. keep going. It's okay. That's right. But we have to try. We have to understand that the Lord is holy. Yes. And if we want to be fully used by the way that we up here talking about every Saturday night, we need full effort in every area. Yes. We cannot cut corners and then expect the miraculous to take place in your life. That's right. That's right. Not perfection. You've got to try. Yes. And talk to him and let him give you encouragement in those areas. His strength. Yes. 
And he will give you the encouragement. There is always a way out, the Bible says, no matter what the temptation is. Yeah. And if yeah. you take the time to pray and listen and put on a song or reach out to somebody on the phone Amen. or whatever it is, you don't got to pick up the bottle or whatever it is. I'm using my life. Whatever that temptation is that has beat you over the head for year after year after year, there is a way out of it. It'll make a way of his There is no chains yeah. that are too big for Jesus not to break. That's right. I, I'm saying this because I want all, all this impossible prayers and all the amazing things that God wants to do in your life. We got to start with the basic things that we are doing in our life first. Yes. Yes. And address them. Because before we address what we really got going on behind closed doors, we're not going to be able to get out and do the things that he wants to do. All the stuff that you're hearing, all sorts of ministers and all people in the prophetic sharing about how this mighty move of God is coming. If you want to fully participate in that, you've got to lay all your cards on the table and say, all right, God, I need help with this, 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 this. Help. I can't do it. Amen. Yes. Good word. That's what he's asking. Yes. This is not a word of condemnation. Come clean. Yes. This is a word of hope to someone who fails all the time in my life. And you know, I have to come to the Lord and say, look, God, I'm struggling with that. I, I can't do it. Uh -huh. We can't on our own. All the time, I have to say that. It takes him, yes. That's what he's looking for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Good word. May your kingdom come soon. And may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, in our hearts. You know, I, I mean, I do. I, Jesus, I hope you come soon. I'm ready. Yes. I am ready. I love y'all, but I am ready for Jesus to come back. Yes, amen. <laughs> I'm ready for all of us to go up and just be with Jesus. Yes, amen. Me too. But you know what? It says right there, may his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That yes. God wants to use us as an instrument to bring heaven on earth. Yes, yes. amen. And if we get all the stuff aligned in the spirit where we are listening and taking the direction and the guidance and we're walking to where God wants to lead us, then we can flow like Kim was talking about. Just that flow where nothing is blocking it and the will of God is coming through us and it's coming out and, and touching people's lives, changing people's lives. They're getting set free, healed, filled with love, all the things that God wants to do. Heaven can come down on through earth, through us as we walk in his in his light, in, in his, in his uh, steps that he's leading us. Yes. We can be the glimpse of heaven for people. When we are walking with the Lord in a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ, and we are going about our days, people notice there's something different about us. There's something different about Todd. There's something yeah. different about Shane. There's yeah. something different yeah. about Brandon. There's something different about Kim. It's because Jesus is in them, and they're not hiding it under a basket. No. They're walking and saying that this is who I follow. Jesus is in my heart. He loves me, and it can't help but attract people that are on pitch darkness. Amen. Because right. it's pitch dark out there. That's right. Getting darker, too. But the light will shine brighter. We can give people so much hope and love by just allowing Jesus to shine. That's right. In ordinary ways, like Kim was talking about. Yes. We don't have to, you don't have to preach a sermon. No. You don't have to sing a worship song. You just have to be who God created you to be and allow his love to flow through your heart. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. The love of Jesus is much more, is far more powerful than any sermon, than any song, than anything. The love of Jesus and allowing that to flow through you and learning how to have it flow through you, through your personality and the way that God created you. Because yeah. there's a way that he flows through you like no other person. That's right. And if you are in prayer and listening and laying everything at his feet and then take the direction that he will give you, he will show you how the love will flow out. Amen. He knows how to unlock every puzzle, every problem, every situation. He has the exact answer for that. Yeah. Thank Precisely. You. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Prayer. Prayer. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Give us today the food we need. Why? Why? I, 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 I've read that. You know, we've all heard this prayer. Yeah. Why, they, why is Jesus saying, ask for the food today? 
It's because you have to come to the Lord every day. Every day, yes. Every day you come to the Lord. Lord, get, we don't need. We, yes, we pray for things in the future, but we need to. We need to be focused on what God has for us today. Yes. We have the next steps. What is the next thing we want to do? What is the next conversation? What is the next? Uh, store we're supposed to go to? What is the next person we're supposed to call? What is the next conversation I'm supposed to have? God, what is the next uh, verse you want me to read? What is the next song, Lord? What is the next thing you want to say to me? What is the next step in every aspect? Yes, order our steps. Lord. Every aspect, yes. listening, every day, coming, and you have to come and get in that routine of understanding that it's, you start your day with Jesus, you end your day with Jesus, and you're speaking to Jesus all the way in between. It's just listening and getting guided, listening and getting guided as he touches you and speaks to you and points to you and uses you and blesses you. Yeah. Amen. Constant communication Thank through prayer. You, Father. Yes. Daily. Daily. Thank you, Father. Thank you. <clears throat> Forgive us our sins as we for have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have heard so many times over the last couple years, and a lot of ministries, uh, especially ones that are working in deliverance and, and healing and doing things at the healing center, and, and the, the, the thing of... Not having unforgiveness in your heart. That's right. And how important that is. Important. And I never read, to be honest, sometimes I didn't, I, I knew it, I believed it, and I saw it from other ministries, and I saw all these people that I looked up to in the spirit, and I was wondering why they all said that. Uh -huh. Why did they all say that? Why did they all say you have to let go of unforgiveness? That's a biggie, yes. And I, so I asked God. Yes. I mean, I know it's not great. I mean, I know that's bad. But what he shared with me was, I sent my son to die on a cross so I could have your sins forgiven. And you're not going to forgive whoever has been in your life. The whole thing is forgiveness. Yeah. The, whole, the whole way that we're able to connect, the whole way you're able to come to heaven, the whole way that we're able to have a relationship and be in communion and be united is that I forgave you. Yeah. And if you're not willing to forgive others, that's a big block. Yeah, you can't be forgiven. That's the main thing. That's the whole key to open the door to allow you in relationship with me is forgiveness. Amen. So if you're not able to walk in forgiveness, you're shutting a big door. Amen. That's it. Now listen, I, that's something we have to work with constantly. Why? Because we are constantly offended. The devil wants to use offense and, and division all the time. Yes. You have to constantly be aware of when things happen in your life and you start feeling that way. And you know what? I was, I was praying and I was going through this, you know, getting ready for the sermon. And I'm looking and I'm, I'm like... <laughs> God directed me on something that we're about to do here in a minute, say a prayer about unforgiveness. And I'm like thinking in my mind, I'm like, I don't got no unforgiveness in my heart. I'm good. I've forgiven everybody. All of a sudden, I'm in the store and I see somebody I hadn't seen in about a year and a half. And I felt sick to my stomach. And I was like, whoops. <laughs> Forgot about her. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dodging her in the aisle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'll show you. Yeah, don't act like you ain't dodging people in the grocery store. Yeah, that's right. Come on. And then I'm driving home. I see somebody behind me that I have a problem with. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, there's another one. And God is like, you have to constantly let me speak to you on this. Yes. It's not even intentional sometimes. Right. But we have to be in a constant state of always being able to... God, I gotta take it. I got you gotta take this unforgiveness in my heart, this bitterness. And and I wanna tell you, it doesn't mean that that is saying whatever happened to you isn't okay or right. There's a lot of hurtful things that happen in our lives that is not right, not okay, but God still wants us to forgive them. That's right. It's not for our sake, it's for it's not for their sake, it's for ours, so we can be free. Amen. Unforgiveness is a cage that the devil puts us in. And that's one of the main temptations that he uses. 
He tempts you to not forgive the person because what they did to you was horrible. And how could you forgive them? They lied to you. They cheated on you. They did whatever it was. You don't have to forgive them. What they did was wrong. And, and there's a kernel of truth in that, right? What they did was wrong. Yes. But what he's tempting you with is leading you into a trap mm -hmm. where, he can't, where you can't fully walk in what God wants to have for you in the freedom that he has for you. And if you build up offense after offense after offense, it weighs you down over time in the spirit. And I'm, I am preaching to myself on this. I have to make sure that I do not get unforgiveness in my heart. Because the devil wants to do anything he can to slow me down what God's doing in my life. Amen. That's and right. it's the same thing in your life too. It the is. devil wants to use some sort of person or some sort of thing that happens in your life to get you upset and get you bitter. And so he can go ahead and put a, a stop of the flow of what God wants to do. So we have to constantly be in a state of God, show me my heart, show me what I'm, show me who I might be offended with. Or as soon as it happens and you're having a tough time letting it go, you got to bring it to him and say, God, I can't handle this. You got to, you got to supernaturally get this unforgiveness out of me because I can't do it. Uh -huh. There are times that that happens in your life. It happens in my life. People do things to me, and on my own, I genuinely try to forgive. I try to forgive. I say I'm going to forgive them. But really, the reality, the next time I see them, I'm still upset. Yeah, we got to submit it to the and Lord. I, and I keep praying. I keep saying, and I, I keep saying all this stuff. But eventually, I just have to literally, like Sam said, lay it down like God. This ain't, uh, you know, I, you don't want us to have unforgiveness. You don't want us to have bitterness in our heart. So you got to take it. Yes. Because I can't do it. We have to give it to him. I, I need you to supernaturally take the bitterness away. I need you to supernaturally take this unforgiveness away and have me feel love for that person. Yeah. Yes. And you say that all your prayer, all my prayers will be answered if it's in line with your will. And I know me having unforgiveness and get asking you to take it away is lined up exactly with your will. So I know you're going to answer this prayer. Yeah. Yes. That is a guaranteed answer prayer. Do, are you going to have to pray it more than once? Probably. Yeah. That's okay. But that's okay. It's the effort of coming to the Lord constantly time and time and time and time again. Yes. So, I, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm preparing the sermon. And when the Lord is giving me a word to share, it's for myself. And I knew that I, I, there was, you know, the lady at the store, I, I, all of a sudden, he was bringing people to my mind. <laughs> and so I'm here, and, and, and God says, you need to pray a deliverance prayer of unforgiveness for yourself. Uh -huh. And I did it. And I had some serious breakthrough over there. Amen. I was coughing and letting it go. I was releasing it. So I asked the Lord, I said, okay, God, do you, how do you want me to do this? Because God says, if, you, if this group... This specific group is going to go to places that he has been uh, prophesying to us and sharing with us to the, to the impossible things, the revival in, in the place where people come from all over the world to come and get healed and be delivered and see the glory of Jesus. I, I know in all my heart that is coming. But before we can do that, we got to all get rid of the unforgiveness in our heart. Amen. Good word, brother. That is the, that is the first step. That is. Yeah. Yep. We have to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video that I prayed and walk through it. And I, I was going to do it, but God says, no, we need to do it as a family. So I'm going to put the mic down, and we're going to stand up, and he's going to give a couple verses. It's not that long of a video. And the prayer is going to be on the screen, and we're going to pray it together with them. And I'm telling you right now, if you are genuine about doing this, if you are genuine about God helping get the bitterness out of your heart and have him pull that root out, you don't have to understand it, but I'm telling you, if you're willing to let God do it and give him a chance in this prayer, you are going to be delivered. Amen. 